Okay. This isn't for the faint-hearted. Um, this is the first time I've been able to see um, Lucy since she died on 2nd of December. But Gloucestershire NHS and GPs, this is what you've done. This is what you've done by failing, Lucy. Yeah, she had MS, but why? I've been looking through letters from GPs, uh, colorectal surgeon, everything today, um, <clears throat> to investigate further the fistula, which is basically faecal leakage that Lucy had. Even back as far as 2018, was not in her best interests. Um, disability discriminators, she was still walking around that. Even 2019, 2020, she was still walking around with her walker. She was mobile. Um, after that, um, sepsis induced cardiac arrest following a few seizures and a heart attack. Um, and then a cardiac arrest whilst in hospital um, because her Eurosepsis was ignored, well, disregarded, um, then she hasn't really walked. Um, she's been able to take a couple of steps um, with a walker, but She's had Eurosepsis quite a few times since that cardiac arrest, which each time deteriorates to Lucy's cognitive impairment. Um, if they got to the root cause, this faecal leakage causing infection, well, faecal impaction, basically, which has been um, identified and confirmed, years ago, uh, if they got to the bottom of that, then that wouldn't, and her bowels are managed properly, um, she wouldn't have probably suffered from faecal leakage from her bits, um, and subsequently all these urosepsis infections. Um, but Gloucestershire, Gloucester Royal and Cheltenham General. Specific individuals I'm talking about, I'm not talking about the whole shebang, um, but specific medical so-called professionals. Um, disregard her symptoms, rapid response, 100%. Uh, always disregarded her symptoms when they were called out by paramedics or by the GP, relying solely on blood tests. Now Lucy's asymptomatic. She doesn't show very often clinical or clinically expected signs. Some people are asymptomatic, simple as that. The rapid response in particular um, should know her history. We've had the same teams out time and time again. Um, never taking her history into account of how many times they have gone away say so, you no know, she's clinically fit uh, even the same day sometimes she's had seizures strokes heart attack um, not to be rushed in but they never learned their lesson never learned from it and never took regard to how lucy presents um, her symptoms will be on my personal page, obviously, um, and some on this page. Um, from probably 2017. Um, if Lucy's temperature, her normal temperature was like 36.6, 36.7, if it went above 37.1, there was cause for concern, and it would generally rise sometimes above 43, 44 even. 
and even at those times, because her bloods showed no concerning levels, she was disregarded. Lucy's definitive test for urine, uh, urosepsis and urine infection was a urine culture. Um, you know, they can get initial results within 24 hours, and then two, three, possibly four, the full culture results. Um, that's all it would take, but no, they wouldn't even regard urine culture results even when they came back like through the roof. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> um, yeah, going back, I haven't been able to see Lucy until today. Uh, the coroner's office wouldn't allow it. Um, she did have a post-mortem at the results yeah. yesterday. Um, we, I did insist on a post-mortem because... I saw, looking back on CCTV, Lucy vomiting and choking whilst calling out. Um, obviously not very loud because of the vomiting and choking, but an hour and 20 minutes, she was struggling, really, really struggling. Um, and it was really difficult to watch, but I had to know. Um, I wasn't able to be there due to, and you may have read on my page, if you haven't, just look down it, you'll find it. Um, uh, deceitful, false and fabric, totally fabricated, retaliative allegation from uh, Tivoli Ward in Cheltenham. Um, now, it's not certain who made this, well it's not even an allegation, um, but it must have been a person. Um, my personal feeling is that this allegation was ordered um, from somebody higher up, probably Carolyn Pennells or Dawn Clark in the hospital legal team, who had conflict with them ever since they attempt, had a failed attempt uh, revoking my power of attorney, bloody liars. Um, so the conflict has escalated and grown really out of proportion since then. Anyway, I've always done Lucy's personal care um, since she needed it, and that's been for years. Carried on doing that even when she was in hospital to avoid the many times that she's been left in soiled and wet pads, and I mean soiled and wet, uh, even on occasions where it's all been in her hands, her hair, over her face, um, and actually dried. Um, so when I've arrived, it's taken me actually up to an hour and a half at one point to uh, clean it all off. Um, and when I've removed the soil pad, you can still see past the faeces on it, uh, the date and time. Um, that was on for nearly 12 hours. Um, but one of the nurses said, oh no, no, I've just changed her, I think, whatever, three o'clock or something when I got in there. and. I said, I just confronted her, I said, well, I'm sorry, I said, but why does the pad still have the same writing that I put on? I said, this is the same pad, but she insisted that Lucy had been cleaned and changed, was it 10 minutes ago or something? Um, well, faeces doesn't dry that quickly in 10 minutes. I think that was on Ward 4A um, in Gloucester. Um, nothing but letdowns, nothing but failures. Um, I've managed to find, um, I was speaking to yesterday, um, well, I was speaking to actually three um, 
specialist forensic pathologists. I think I've secured uh, one of them. I haven't really had much conversation with the other two. I think I've secured one of them um, to carry out a second autopsy, post-mortem, whatever you call it. Um, because I think that the first one was not in spite of assurances that it would be. I don't think it was thorough enough. Um, I had put all of my concerns across to Gloucestershire coroners that I, because of all this conflict and I, I have lots of evidence of the lies, um, the deceit, the covert do not resuscitate covert respect forms, which are actually meant to record a patient's wishes, uh, so to be done in conjunction with a patient or their power of attorney and family, um, and covert deprivation of liberty forms. There are actually three covert respect forms, three covert deprivation of liberties um, within June and July this year. Why do it covertly? There's only one reason for that, and that's to hide something. Um, the first one I found, uh, they didn't even know I had it, um, because it was just left on a bed. Um, oh, it went missing. Um, they were frantically trying to find it. Um, Anyway, because of this conflict, I, I had re strongly requested and almost insisted that a post-mortem be done out of county to avoid conflict, to avoid any possible allegiance and collaboration with um, Gloucestershire NHS, because that is all we've seen for over six years. Uh, they refused that and denied it. They did say that um, a pathologist from out of area, just across the border, Wales, um, would carry out a post-mortem. They also assured me, um, I wrote a very, very lengthy email detailing of why I think she died um, due to failures. The fact that she was vomiting um, for over an hour and 20 minutes and before taking her last breath. Um, the faecal leakage, the distended stomach, the faecal impaction, all this should have been looked at properly. Um, there have been quite, how can I say, gentle investigations, not fully investigative, for uh, some kind of fistula to show where the faeces were coming from. But just lately that seems to even be denied by district nurses, GPs and Gloucestershire hospitals. Well, even I think 27th of November she was leaking um, fluids and that's direct from one of the carers that were looking after her. <coughs> um, so there is something, call it a fistula, call it a, a tear or something that something causes the faecal leakage, causing infection. Also, when she gets impacted, causes the infection, but also the faecal vomiting. Um, something led up to um, her death, the root cause basically, uh, that's what I was after. I was assured that they would do, um, and I said to them, you know, be as, as in-depth and, um, you know, whatever you can do, even if you've got to dissect this and dissect that, they assured me, um, but no, it wasn't done, um, hence, um, second post-mortem. Um, they also assured me that um, they would ask the pathologist to get a sample of the vomit that was 
um, still all over Lucy's face. Um, um, get it uh, tested to see, uh, to confirm whether or not it actually was um, faecal vomit. Me, Josh, two undertakers and two paramedics strongly believed that it was. Um, there wasn't anything from down below. Um, you, you can't mistake the, the smell of poo, um, especially not that close. So, still got a pillowcase preserved and the sheet preserved. Um, and we're the, getting that tested, see if there's faecal vomit in there. Um, if it is, that will strengthen the case for an inquest because she was failed and she was let down. I just don't know what else to say because I'm just so angry and frustrated of the letdowns and they were blatant, um, just so blatant because she has MS, she has a poor quality of life. No, Lucy had a reasonable quality of life. Yeah, did deteriorate, as I've said, with um, each untreated Eurosepsis, um, you know, escalating to all the rest. But even a couple of days before she died, you can see videos um, where Lucy and myself have had WhatsApp conversations with Josh holding the phone. Um, she's happy-go-lucky, she's feeding herself, picking a drink up, she's watching, was it Mary Poppins or School of Rock? Um, she was happy just because she couldn't walk and couldn't make life-changing decisions or important decisions unless she was given a choice but you have to explain in detail what each choice entailed um yeah then she could make a decision that's no reason to just cut her off from treatment or investigations um it isn't you know it just isn't there are many more people with a worse, much worse quality of life than Lucy had. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm going to fight this and I'm going to keep on fighting because the more they push me, um, the stronger I'll get. I've already had um, a, what can we call it, um, like a heads up to watch your back because um, NHS are going to try and push the police um, into this false allegation. Um, basically, around, I think it may have been, uh, she, she was intuitively warded from Gloucester with a massive pressure sore, really deep, that hadn't been dressed very often it was inconsistent. So, you know, obviously feces and urine were getting into the open sore. If they put dresses on, much of the time, as with Tivoli Ward, um, Gloucester would use such small dressings that the sticky border would be right on top of the open sore. I mean, how stupid. Um, this is why the word incompetence is part of my page name um, you know nurses just some don't seem to be what they used to be um, and certainly I don't think they're trained as well as they were not really their fault but you know you've got to be a bit broad about it haven't you um, a pressure ulcer is a wound um, common sense should prevail it doesn't um, I uh, discovered that somebody, when Lucy was in Tivoli Board, put a DNA CPR on her, behind my back again, no discussion, 
um, no confirmation that they were going to do it, nothing like that. So I threatened to take them to the court of protection and I threatened to sue them. From that moment, uh, both myself and Sarah, our familiar carer, were met with hostility from most of the staff, predominantly senior ward staff sisters, um, the registrar, and uh, one, one of the consultants, and I must say, it was not Mr. Ord, uh, Eaton, that was his name, um, just met with impatience and things like that. So anyway, I continued from 17th of July up to 26th of July until Lucy was discharged, providing her personal care, along with our other carer on her days which were few, um, were frequent. No concerns, no prevention, nothing like that from providing personal care. Then Lucy was discharged late afternoon on the 26th of July, sent home into my care, um, where obviously I continued all aspects of care for her. No concerns, no prevention methods, nothing. 4th of August, um, I'm sorry if I'm repeating myself, 4th of August I was arrested 10.40 or something in the evening. <coughs> that was on the Friday night. Saturday I was interviewed uh, and they came out with this and I quote, the hospital said, we think he may have inserted a finger into either her bottom or vagina whilst doing personal care, like whilst cleaning her. Um, my first reaction was, are they stupid? You know, I knew they were, were coming out with retaliations of intimidation and aggressiveness, which I swear to God, I have never been um, to them, never. Um, I've stated my case no differently than I'm speaking now. That's, you know, the max. Um, I said to the DC leech, I said, right, I said, why don't you look at the fact that they didn't prevent me from doing a personal care for all that time? The other fact that they sent her home into my care. If this is supposed to have occurred, by the way, on the 17th of July, that's the day after she was um, transferred from Gloucester to Tivoli Ward, from the 17th of July to the 26th of July, and then sent home into my care for another, what was it, nine, ten days, and nobody said anything, and this is supposed to have happened on the 17th. My God, um, you know, open your ears, open your eyes, you can see where this is coming from. Um, but it's taken this woman over four months to investigate. Um, investigate what? Even the solicitor said it doesn't even meet the criteria. Um, you know, 51%, not even that, um, for investigation. Four months to investigate. Okay, go and speak to whoever the person is that thinks they may have seen me do this, that. Just go and speak to them. Simple. If I had done something, um, there would, still wouldn't be any evidence anyway, just somebody's word against mine. Um, the investigation's still going on, um, hence the reason why I wasn't able to be with Lucy, sit her up or turn her on her side while she choked to death on her own vomit. Um, how I know that's happened, as I said, is by watching back on the CCTV um, the afternoon that she died. Um, that was quite difficult to do. If I'd have heard her, 
she would have been sat up or turned over. Probably wouldn't have even happened. Um, called the GPA, they would have ignored it. If she had infection, that would have got worse. And by the way, there was no um, blood samples or, or urine samples taken from Lucy during the post-mortem. Um, she's probably been washed all out by now. Um, but yeah, we'll get to the bottom of it. And hopefully DC Leach will either arrest me again for uh, for a 2% chance of whatever she's hoping to find, or she's going to drop it, give me my, two la my laptop back, two phones, Alexa even, and Lucy's monitor, that Josh would have heard Lucy calling out. Why would she take the monitor? Oh, I know, because it had... Um, Amazon Prime downloaded on it and Lucy used to watch Mary Poppins and little movies while she was in Tivoli Ward but they kept turning it off they wouldn't let her watch her movies unless we were there um, used as a punch bag weren't you Lucy just used as a bloody punch bag <sighs> because you were a strain on the NHS weren't you lovely you know, all they had to do was sort you out instead of taking years and years and years and years of disregarding you and being discriminating because you had MS. That's all they had to do. Hmm. Freezing, aren't you? Gonna be kept in that horrible fridge, aren't you, until until the real pathologist finds out what caused it. You poor sod. Um, you still have a nice little sleep, aren't you? Come see your ponies. William, Rosie, Lumiere, Maxie, David, Raja, Reflection, Tiny, Nicely, Boo Boo. Um, Want to be with them, haven't you? And you're probably having a nice chat to your mum. Probably brushing your mum's hair because you used to like doing that, didn't you? When you looked after her. Mm, you little bugger. Oh, well. Just tuned in. Mary Binks. Um, have a look on my Carers Want Competence page. Um, just scroll down. It, the page is not all about this. Um, I support others, uh, many others actually, with raising awareness of neglect and abuse in the health and care system. Um, but just lately, I've had to put our own stuff on there. But yeah, if I scroll down the page, even just look through the videos if you want, whatever, you'll see, um, you'll see quite a bit on there of exposure. Um, that's where you see it. Right, I'm just going to sit down and have a quiet little chat here now. Okay, um, if, I don't know if any of you can share this, but if you have any compassion or empathy, um, if you don't share this one, please share some of the other stuff because without any help from people that say they support the page and follow and everything. Um, without your help, I'm not going to get anywhere. And neither is anybody else. That is the point. It's not just about Lucy. Hence, you know, I'm not all emotional and shit like that. Um, you know, I've got to keep any emotions separate. Lucy was very vulnerable. And looking after Lucy was, um, if you imagine you've got like two, three year old child, um, that's what it was like. Not that she had a mind of a child, but the mental cognitive impairment um, kind of came across like that. You had to explain everything and, you know, um, 
why do you, why do you have to take your tablets? Um, why do we need to change your pad? Um, you know, if you ask Lucy, would you like a cup of tea? Um, she'll probably say yes, but damn well that that she meant coffee. So you have to explain the difference. Um, everything was about giving choices and explaining, encouraging. Um, you know, sometimes she wouldn't take a drink or something like that. So you have to explain to her in a nice, calm and very detailed way of why people must drink, what can happen if they don't and so on. Um, you know, distraction methods. Oh, look at your lovely blue eyes or look at your, which was blonde, look at your nice long blonde hair. Uh, let me see your smile. Oh, here we go, have a drink. And she'd do it, no problem. That's all it took, patience. Um, unfortunately, a lot of people don't have patience, not their fault, but it just is what it is. But yeah, looking after Lucy, to, to me, I consider, I think of her, to me, she's more like, you know, she's my vulnerable child. Um, that's how it's been for years. Um, and she was, she was very vulnerable, much too vulnerable for NHS and GPs to use her as a punch bag. Do you know the district nurses, I'll just tell you this, <coughs> sorry, used to give her um, bowel irrigation, because um, the first time she had urosepsis she was vomiting. She was literally vomiting, projectile vomiting, faecal fluid and blood. That was confirmed over two GPs that stood in her bedroom. Uh, when she went to hospital, you know, like you take a child to the doctors, once they get there, they seem okay. So, you know, just send them off. That was Lucy. Um, so in, out, in, out, in, out of hospital for like three, three and a half months. Um, before they finally thought to, you know, uh, get a urine sample. Well, I actually asked the GP for a urine sample, um, and then it was confirmed. All that went on for so long. Um, but, yeah, so from that, it was discovered that she had faecal impaction, which is not the same as constipation, it is much worse. Um, causing this faecal leakage and so on. Um, I forget my bloody track now, aren't I? Um, somebody tell me. I, I really don't know where I was going with this. Um, I, I just don't know. Um, I don't know, I'm... I'm I'm a bit stumped. I don't know if I was talking about uh, not having any emotions. Well, I have, but you know, not being emotional, I can't be. Um, you know, I've had to suction my own mother out in Gloucester Hospital, Gloucester Royal, as she profusely bled from her nose and her mouth um, because they stuck a slight DNAR on her at the end of the bed. There were, I think, three nurses at uh, HCA and some doctor milling around. I'm there begging them, come and help me, you know, she's bleeding profusely here. Um, both stomach ulcers, but they couldn't because she'd had a slight DNAR put on her. And that was basically with her all the time that she was in hospital, the short time that she was in there. But they didn't bother to tell me, didn't bother to tell any of us. Um, yeah, I think that's the track that I was on. Things like that, things that hurt you, um, either going to break you down or make you stronger. Um, to get anywhere and stay focused. You have to be strong about things.
doesn't mean you don't care, doesn't mean you don't cry, um, it just means that you're focused and you have to be. Um, right, I'm going to stop boring you now, um, but I'll be back. Um, NHS Gloucestershire, yeah, I'm coming for you. Um, I've got lots more um, videos, audio recordings that I, I need to dig out. Uh, that's where I was. What a bloody idiot I am. Um, district nurses, yeah. After that, the, um, after this faecal vomiting. Eventually, 2018, she got to see a colorectal surgeon. That was like two years of trying. Um, district nurses were given her bowel irrigation, um, back and tube type thing. Um, Cathby Dennis, uh, another one called Lucy. Um, can't remember which one the boys used to call her Big Bird. <laughs> Bless her. Um, nice enough people, you would have thought, until one of their own reported them for using black and mouldy, and I'm talking black, like this black, bowel irrigation equipment for almost eight months, maybe over. Um, oh, Lucy sepsis again, yeah, are you surprised? Um, supposed to be changed regularly, but they didn't bother. Never held their hands up, never saw the nurse that raised the concern again. Um, I believe she was either bullied out or sacked, I, I'm not really sure. Um, really nice girl, compassionate. District nurses turned hostile, um, so I started posting about them on my page. Couldn't really name them at that point, um, because I was getting accused of breaching Lucy's dignity. No, Lucy's dignity is what she perceives it as. Not anybody else, not people that don't know her. If Lucy feels undignified by being pushed from pillar to post, being used as a punch bag, being denied this, being denied that, that's up for her to decide what her dignity is. We've had many discussions on what if and so on like that. Um, you will we'll see a video on my page where Lucy's telling the doctors to fuck off and sort me out. What would you tell doctors if they say that you must die like from a DNA CPR or be allowed to die? No, she didn't want that. But they considered that it will be in it will be in her best interest to preserve her dignity. No. Lucy would not feel undignified with me doing this. She would not. She wouldn't. Um the young gumbo wants to join. Let me see what's this. Um uh, she wants to they can't, I don't even know what I'm doing. Um, I don't know what somebody wants to join at a video call. I, I don't know, I'm not really good at, I'm crap at these Facebook lives anyway. Um, not very good at all. Hello, lovely. <laughs> I didn't really hear any of that anyway. Um, didn't hear much of it. Well, I didn't hear any of it, in fact. So there we go. Anyone wants to get shitty about, about doing this, just, well, let's be perfectly blunt with you. I don't give a damn on your own business. Um, all this, oh, you shouldn't be putting this on Facebook, shouldn't be putting that on Facebook. Um, this is about raising awareness. You know, this is no different than, than people going to the media or speaking their mind on 
TV and documentaries and bloody ITV this morning where they don't actually give a shit anyway. Um, it's all about awareness. So if you don't like it, you know, um, thanks, Dion. Um, sorry, I couldn't hear you um, on the join. I probably haven't got really much of a signal in here. Um, yeah, so final word. Um, no, no, shut up. Um, I've got Lucy's pink blanket in here that Sarah Cara bought for her. Uh, she likes a nice warm blanket. I've also got some socks for her because she always gets cold feet, don't you, lovely? Um, yeah, final word. If somebody finds all this offensive because it's out in the open, um, I'm sorry you feel like that. Um, you know, you're entitled to your opinions, but if anybody wants to criticise, I really don't want to hear it. Okay, just you know, I'll respect your your feelings, your principles, your values, but please respect mine. All right, just you know, don't start trolling and giving loads of shit over it, please. Because I can really do without that. All right then, Lucy. I'm going to ask them if I can cover you up with your nice pink blanket and put some socks on your cold feet. All right? Yeah, you're a poor little bugger, aren't you? Okay. Well, whoever's been listening, just thanks anyway. Um, if you could please share this. I think there's only, only a few of you anyway, but... If you can, just please share it for me. Um, try and do it on public so that others might um, might also look at it and think, oh, yeah, I'll share that. Right, but thank you in advance. Mm, hopefully. <laughs> so bloody share. All right. Thank you. Speak to you later.